Some people have uh, related to basically the canary in the coal, coal mine. The bees react faster than we do as humans. They're getting into diets now and they're dying off. That was beekeeper Larry Pender. His story is the same as other beekeepers across North America. Bees are vanishing. On Vancouver Island, beekeepers say 90% of their hives have been wiped out. In Ontario, bee populations have declined as much as 75%. Through pollination, these insects are responsible for one third of the food we eat, so no wonder their disappearance is such a huge worry. Dr. Reese Halter is a conservation biologist following bee decline and is the author of The Incomparable Honeybee. He joins me now from bee country in Camarillo, California. So Reese, first of all, why are the bees in a decline? Uh, the, the bees are ill, uh, they're ill around the world. Uh, there is no one reason, it's a collision of events. They're being poisoned, uh, they're, uh, they're suffering from electromagnetic radiation, they're suffering from being overworked, there's varroa mites, there's the, the Israeli paralysis virus and uh, fungus, and it's all coming together all at once here. So is there one that particularly stands out, one problem that stands out the most for you? Yeah, uh, my bear uh, bug here is the amount of poisons we're putting on the land. The amount of pesticides, insecticides, fumicides, fungicides that we're loading on uh, into the biosphere at five billion pounds each year, it's, it, this is just unacceptable. When we have bees that are exhibiting uh, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's symptoms, you know, enough is enough. Hundreds of millions of bees have died in France and bear has, uh, the injunctions there, the law has stopped them from putting these neonicotinoids on the land. And we are slathering uh, North America with these poisons that, that just, they're, they're, not, they're not good. Okay, so scientists have been debating the mystery, the sort of disappearance of bees for quite a few years now. How do you know what's causing these changes? Well, there is no one reason uh, here, but colony collapse disorder, when you go to the hives mm -hmm. and all you see is uh, the queen bee uh, looking haggard with zero workers, and usually there should be tens of thousands of uh, females uh, working hard in the hive. Uh, the, the bees, much like the ants incidentally, when they get sick, they, uh, they don't want to come back into the hive and they're dying uh, well away from the hive. And in many cases, we can't even find where they're dying, but they don't want to come and infect the colony. So uh, th this is, it's shocking. Definitely. Now, what is the situation like worldwide right now? Worldwide, it's, uh, it's mirroring what we're seeing here in North America. Western Europe has been lambasted with bee deaths, and uh, China is uh, laden in, uh, with toxicity. So in many cases in China, we, we know examples where uh, beekeepers won't even take their hives into valleys, and human beings are having to hand pollinate plants. Uh, the only country that appears to be in a, a wee bit better shape is Australia and as a result uh, they're exporting queens around the world like the Dickens. Bees are responsible for producing so much of our food obviously so could you paint a picture for us what would a world without bees actually even look like? A, unimaginable. First of all uh, without bees we cannot survive. You're talking about 235,000 flowering known plants on Earth. About 80% of them uh, rely on the bees. There are 80,000 different kinds of trees. Some 79,300 are of the angiosperm kind. They uh, predominantly rely on the bees. The, the world uh, could not, as we know it, exist without the uh, humble uh, incomparable honeybee. So Reese, what can be done to actually stop this decline? What we're asking homeowners to do this spring is to consider uh, buying uh, native blue and yellow flowers. Plant them in as big a block as you can. If you live in an apartment, you can put them in pots. Uh, of course, in your yard, plant uh, big blocks of blue or yellow. Uh, do not use uh, pesticides or insecticides or herbicides or miticides or fungicides. Don't do it in your yard. There's no reason now. 
Uh, every morning we're asking people to put a bowl of water out and uh, then at the end of the day bring it in, replenish it the next day. The bees need water too. And lastly, support your local beekeepers. Buy honey from the local beekeepers. They need our help now. Absolutely. I definitely do, actually. I buy the ones in the combs. Way to go, Zaya. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us today, Reese. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Dr. Reese Halter is a biologist and founder of Global Forest Science, a conservation research organization. He joined me from Camarillo, California.